All right, so let's shift gears now from the sub-national to my guy, Coyote. Well, what's up? What are we doing next? We're not en entirely moving away from that conversation. Yes. I remember you asking about the syringe factory, right? And we have different industrial plants across the country, some of them moribund, some of them very, very moribund. So with artificial intelligence now, are we able to leapfrog and say, well, we may not have caught up with the whole industrial revolution, but are we able to catch up and at least still say we got double promotion, mm. as they say in school. <laughs> so on the program this morning, uh, we're joined by a fellow in the Department of Engineering, Technology and Industrial Distribution at Texas A&M University is an assistant professor and Charlotte and Walter Buchanan faculty. Chuku Subelu of DK joins us uh, virtually on the program this morning. Uh, welcome to the Morning Brief. Thank you. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Ah, certainly, certainly. And I don't know if you caught the conversation uh, we just had. Uh, with uh, you know, a member of government from a Ibom state. And we asked about the syringe factory, for example, and you know, a factory that was producing a, a billion syringes, he said, is no more working for various factors. And I can give you examples of these kinds of plants across the country that are either moribund, so we have to now import some of these things. And I, I wonder, when you look at the, uh, the failures, I should say, do you think artificial intelligence can be the solution for Nigeria to be able to get those things back, provide employment and boost the economy? Is that a possibility? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much. And first of all, thank you for uh, bringing me to the show this uh, morning. Uh, as someone with a background in engineering and manufacturing, as well as artificial intelligence, I can speak first hand on this. Uh, I've seen uh, you know, the tr uh, transformation uh, potential for this technology when applied correctly. Uh, again, uh, manufacturing, again, is a cornerstone of uh, economic development. Uh, but for Africa, uh, I mean, manufacturing has uh, long been held back with uh, by issues like uh, poor infrastructures, uh, on reliable uh, energy supply, limited access to finance and outdated production method. But, uh, you know, yet in the face of these challenges, uh, AI could offer, a, you know, a chance for us to rewrite the script and also drive uh, the industry to, uh, you know, shape it and make it a lot better. So uh, in terms of uh, how, uh, you know, just to uh, piggyback on your question now, in terms of how, you know, AI can really, you know, uh, reshape the manufacturing industry in Africa, I can uh, break it down for you in many perspectives. One is in uh, optimizing production efficiency. You could, and um, this is uh, one one of the most obvious benefits of uh, artificial intelligence. It's the ability to make uh, manufacturing processes more efficient, for example, through predictive analytics. We could uh, look at, uh, we could analyze data from, you know, machines predict when breakdown would happen and uh, all these are called uh, predictive maintenance. We could use that uh, artificial intelligence to do that. And we could uh, also use it to reduce waste uh, and uh, improve quality. So the AI technology can help us to reduce waste in manufacturing by uh, improve, improving uh, quality control. For instance, we have the uh, computer uh, vision system powered by AI, which can detect, uh, predict and uh, detect uh, defect in in, in product faster and uh, more accurately than humans. Mm. Let me just quickly come in here. I mean, you paint a very beautiful picture and it's almost like we're in class now. You're taking us to class, uh, judging from uh, your background as well. Uh, maybe what we can also do is help people see what is happening in other climbs, right? And realize that, wait a minute, if it's been done there, then we can do it here. So how is the world, uh, practically now, changing how manufacturing is done. I was going to ask, how can a bread manufacturer, for example, uh, use AI? Because I had a conversation with someone a few days ago and I asked, are you looking at how AI can help? And the person goes, AI, no, my, like our own problems are, <laughs> are not AI uh, kind of problems. But 
I think the person could have actually, if a person had these uh, kinds of insights, could have maybe found a way to uh, use AI to help the, the system. So maybe give us examples of uh, maybe some of the industries out there that are using AI and how that is helping them to improve on the outcomes. Uh, or so far uh, that I know, uh, that specifically in uh, Nigeria and Africa, I know uh, the Dangote group could, uh, like, the, for example, the Dangote cement uh, did adopt some uh, AI driven solutions to optimize production line and they've used it to track inventory and improve uh, uh, their logistics. And uh, there are other uh, telecommunication companies uh, like the uh, this um, uh, Safari uh, Com in Kenya that have leveraged AI to to do uh, to work on it. Uh, so I read right to work on its uh, smart ag agriculture initiatives, uh, working with uh, manufacturers to develop uh, AI powered uh, equipment for again uh, food processing and packaging. So uh, I I know uh, African breweries uh, that uh, South African. Uh, company that have used AI for predictive maintenance for equipment and smart data analytics for things like quality control during production. So uh, again, it is uh, limited as it is, but it, that's, it's a really uh, big change, uh, game changer. Fantastic. So uh, it can be done. It's been done. But then the question arises, which I think that the person had issues with, is the cost. Right. Uh, so this person is still str struggling to pay uh, salaries, trying to buy diesel or petrol, as the case may be, trying to buy raw materials, which are quite expensive now. And then you tell the person, hey, you can use AI. And I imagine if he put it out as a vote to the workers, uh, do we get this AI system on board and maybe cut down your salaries or just keep paying your salaries as it is and leave the AI out, they will certainly vote for getting salaries. So in terms of costs, is it really affordable? Beyond the buzzword, everybody wants to jump on AI. How affordable is it? Uh, I sense you might say in the long run it will be, but how are people able to afford it right now with this current costs impl implications? Well, we are, we're trying to use machines to uh, do something humans cannot uh, well, what humans can do it, but uh, do it faster, right? So uh, hopefully that uh, in turn would cut cost. The whole idea is to use this technology to cut cost. Now, if your question is relating to how small businesses can adopt this technology when resources are limited, it's a very important question because uh, small businesses are the backbone in this case for Africans, uh, for Africa's economy. And they make up, of course, 80% uh, of the continent's enterprises, yet uh, many of these businesses would, uh, do struggle to adopt advanced technologies like AI due to limited resources, like you just mentioned. However, uh, small businesses could, uh, you know, don't need the massive budget, budget to get started with AI. And there are just some uh, ways they can uh, you know, uh, leverage resources and uh, well, work with this technology. For example, uh, AI doesn't have to mean large scale automation for uh, from day one. Small businesses can start by just addressing specific uh, uh, pain point. For instance, uh, local bakery, for, for instance, could use AI to predict, let's say, demand patterns, ensuring that they pick the right amount of bread each day and reduce waste, right? And, uh, you know, there are also affordable tools like um, Google. Uh, AI auto uh, ML um, that are out there just you know which this allows small businesses to build uh, custom uh, AI models with uh, minimal expertise so for instance uh, if you you're e small e-commerce for example small e-commerce platforms can uh, leverage uh, let's say AI chatbots like uh, hotspot um, uh, the hotspot or the chat GTP, for example, to handle customer inquiry and uh, uh, efficiently. And these are all AI uh, technology and they could really leverage that. So they don't need right. to have that 
you know, that large amount of funds to get started with the technology as it is. So you can start small and then maybe scale up depending on how it works for you. Fantastic. So two points I want us to touch on as we wind down. Uh, so this means then we have to sort of go all the way back and ensure that for schools are able to uh, inculcate AI into the curriculum properly. Uh, so it's taken for granted that whoever is seeking a job already has understanding and it's not just trying to learn on the job. So in terms of curriculum, but curriculum will not happen in isolation. It depends on how government is driving this with policies across board. I know Nigeria has an AI collective. The ministry is driving this. We have, uh, you know, civil society as well. Even the schools, uh, well, the high institutions, I know, I know of one at least uh, that is in that uh, body. So let's talk about government's policy, which will then trickle down. First, how would you rate Nigeria's AI policy, the AI climate? Is it friendly? Is it such that it's going to foster that kind of uh, takeoff? or otherwise, so you can rate it on a scale of one to 10. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll stay out of the rating. The, the reason why I'm, I'm not too in touch uh, with the uh, present system uh, in Nigeria, but I can tell you that uh, uh, you know, governments and international organizations are increasingly uh, supporting this technology and supporting adopting this technology for small businesses. Uh, for example, the I, you know because I, I just um, you know not just focus on Nigeria, just uh, Africa, uh, Africa as a whole. Rwanda, uh, for example, has this uh, national. Uh, artificial intelligence policy that provides uh, incentives for business adopting AI technology, and I'm uh, and I've read the uh, you know uh, in the Nigeria case there um, the uh, a lot of initiatives coming up. Uh, you know I can pinpoint anyone at this point that that I have, that did adopt a similar you know uh, you know. Uh, policies to provide incentives for uh, businesses to, uh, you know, adopting AI technology. So it's, it's a great, uh, again, uh, NGOs uh, are springing up here and there, uh, like the, I think that the African Union Development Agency, which offers grants and, uh, you know, resources for uh, tech enabled techno uh, initiatives and technologies. Fantastic. So uh, the future is bright. Uh, certainly, this is something we have to leverage on beyond uh, the buzzword. But just one more thing. Um, it's cliche now, people wondering, would AI take my job? But I think it's been said that it's the person who knows how to use AI well that will take your job eventually, or at least would dominate in, in that field. But what does 2025 look, for, look like for AI? Uh, maybe we can do a prediction. What is it? What does it look like? Some think that this is a buzz that will fade away. Some say it's been here with us already. What's all this buzz about uh, suddenly? So 2025, if you could give a prediction, what would it look like maybe for Africa and the world at large? Oh, uh, uh, artificial intelligence is not going anywhere. It's here to stay. It's a simulation of human intelligence and machines that are designed to think, designed to learn, designed to make decisions, and it allows systems to uh, not just process vast amounts of data, recognize patterns and perform tasks that are uh, typically would require, you know, more uh, power if a human was doing the same. So again, it's here to stay. It's going to help us do things uh, faster, better, and it's it's only going to get better with uh, a lot of systems that are you know springing up. It's it's only machines are you know machines are coming, and there's no uh, doubt about that. I'm sure you saw the Tesla bots and everything you know. <laughs> So it's I, it's only going to get uh, better. It's only going to get. Uh, we're only going to see uh, machine learning, which is artificial intelligence, which is subset of artificial artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, make the world a better, you know, more predictive, you know, um, place.
it'll be interesting to see some of these driverless cabs in Nigeria. I wonder what the ride hailing drivers will do when this happens, because that's a major provider of employment. But we have to thank you so much. Uh, we've been speaking with Professor Chiku Zubelu Ufodike, fellow in the Department of Engineering, Technology and Industrial Distribution at Texas A&M University, joining us from Texas, USA. Thank you for staying up, because I know it must be really tough right now. I wish you uh, the very best. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Uh, you as a manufacturer can use AI to predict your demand trend, know when it's time to fix your machine and so much more. So let's dive right in. You're welcome. We'll take a moment now. When we return, uh, the Morning Brief continues with a very important conversation. Just stay with us.